In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get pin sharp images from front to back. I'm going to show you some techniques that you can use that are really, really simple. I'm going to show you some apps that you can use, and I'm also going to share some examples of photos where I've done just that. But it's all about getting sharp images. So images that are not just in focus, but are as sharp as we can get them with the technology that we're using. you if this image here I told you that I took it at f6.4 which is not a very small aperture but everything is pin sharp on it I'll just stick it on the screen now so you can have a look but it's a really sharp image but it's all about understanding focus and where to focus and where to focus specifically for the lenses and the focal length that you, you've got on your camera and a little bit about hyperfocal distance, but knowing when to use that and when not to use it. And a bit of a clue, almost never. So the reason I'm doing this video today is I was going to do a Faroes Island um, video, another one, the fourth in the series this weekend, but it needs a little bit more editing. So I want to spend a bit more time and make that just perfect. So I put a poll out on YouTube community. So thank you very much for doing that. And it was close, but focus just tipped it over exposure. So both are really popular topics. I do get a lot of comments about both those topics. And there's, there's two different things with focus really. There's the mechanics of it. So how you're actually gonna go about getting the things that you want in focus in focus, and then the aesthetics of it. So why do you want something sharp? You know, what's going to be sharp and what doesn't need to be sharp in your image? And I think you need to understand both of those to, to, to get focus correct. So I'll, I'll touch on, on both of those as we go through. But before we get into it, I think we've got to just just do a few definitions. So the first one is hyperfocal distance. So this is this thing that people talk about all the time and um, there's a lot of controversy of whether you should use it or you shouldn't use it. Personally, I hardly ever use it and I don't think you need to, but it is the most accurate way of getting as much in focus as you can. So the definition of hyperfocal distance is it's the minimum distance, so the closest distance to the camera that you can focus on that will allow you to get everything up to infinity in focus. And then what actually is acceptably in focus is everything from half that distance all the way through to infinity. And that's the next definition really, which is acceptable focus. So don't think that if you um, focus on your hyperfocal distance and you go to infinity and you go to half your hyperfocal distance that everything's going to be as pin sharp there's going to be a graduation of sharpness across that and acceptable focus the definition of that really is when you look at it a hundred percent on your monitor you do you accept that but hyperfocal distance is definitely the way of getting the most in focus but there's a lot of error and I'm, we're going to come on to that in a minute because if you don't get it right it can cause a real big issue so the final thing I just want to define is diffraction. So diffraction happens when you've got a really small aperture and it's a property of the wave nature of light, which means that as it goes through that small um, opening, then it, it slightly bends as it goes through. It's slightly more technical than that. I don't want to go into the, the real difficult physics of diffraction because I just don't think there's any point. But, but basically what you need to know is that you have a small opening, then you're going to get some interference, you're going to get a softer image. So let's go and have a look at a, a wide angle scenario first. I'm just going to put a graphic up here which will help us understand um, the relationship between aperture, focal length, and what's in focus in the image. And I think this is the best way to show it. So we'll, we'll have a look at this, and then we'll go and have a look at some actual examples. The first thing I want to show you is at 20 millimeters. So if we just have a 20 millimeter lens on, this is a full frame lens, it's at 20 millimeters, and I'm just gonna change the aperture. And I'm gonna look at three different ways of focusing and see how that's affected what's in acceptable focus with those three different ways of focusing. So the first way is focusing infinity in the image. The second way is focusing at the hyperfocal distance. And then the last one is focusing at double the hyperfocal distance. So not, not actually at the hyperfocal distance, but double it. And I just, I'll explain why I put that in in a minute, but it, it is important. All of these should produce something in focus at infinity. So 
All we're doing then is looking as we change the aperture, how the near point of focus is changing. So as you can see here, I increase the aperture and I go to start at f5.6. And as we go up to f8, then we drop that infinity focus um, technique down to 1.6 meters. The hyperfocal distance is at 0.8 meters and then the other one's in between. F11, we got 1.2 for the infinity focus. 60 centimeters for the hyperfocal distance. F16, which we're probably not gonna use because we're gonna get quite a bit of diffraction then. What I find is anything past about F14 really starts to, you see diffraction happening and, and it softens that image a little bit. But I put it down here anyway. F16 is 83 centimeters for the 20 millimeter lens at infinity focus and 43 centimeters at the hyperfocal distance and 56 for the double the hyperfocal distance. So what you can see at 20 millimeters here is that there isn't a huge difference between that closest point of acceptable focus between focusing at the hyperfocal distance and focusing at infinity. I mean, okay, it's 60 centimeters, but if you're hand holding your, your camera, um, I'm not saying you are going to, but say you are hand holding your camera, then nothing is gonna be closer to you than 1.2 meters. So focusing at infinity on a 20 millimeter lens, when you're hand holding at f11, everything will be in focus because you'll never have something that, that is closer than 1.2 meters because it will be, you know, you'd have to be above your feet and, you know, it's, it's likely that the foreground is gonna be grass or rocks by your feet, which is exactly why this works so well. And in fact, I could actually go to um, F6 to actually get everything in focus on this because I was hand, held it, hand holding it and this was at my feet. What you can see though, is that if you do focus on the hyperfocal distance, then you can get it a little bit closer. So if you had it on a tripod and you thought, actually, I want it at 20 millimeters, I don't want to go above F11, but I need to get to maybe I don't know, 90 centimeters, and I've only got it up to down to 1.2 meters. The way I do that is I, I work out what the hyperfocal distance is, and then I double it, and then I guess it a little bit, because then I'm not too bothered about going closer than the hyperfocal distance, which is the cardinal sin. Big red letters should come up here now, <laughs> because if you do that, if you try and use the hyperfocal distance, and you guess it, and you focus too close, infinity, won't be in focus and your mountains will be soft and look like this. And that is just the worst thing that can happen. Because if your foreground is just slightly too soft, you can get away with it in most circumstances. But if your mountains are blurred and out of focus, it looks awful. And that's my biggest hatred of the hyperfocal distance because there's so much room for error there. But if you double it and you double the hyperfocal distance, then you've got a little bit more leeway. You can guess it a little bit more. So that is a safe way of, of making sure everything's in focus. I don't use it very often, probably one in 10 times, but when I just want to push a little bit more out of that affinity focus technique, then I find that's the safest way to do it. So hopefully that's been helpful. Hopefully I can now go on and, and, and show you these um, shots that I've taken and some examples and talk to, talk to you about where I focused and talk to you about where some of it might be soft, but I think that's acceptable in the image because the aesthetics of it allow me to do that. Okay, let's start with this one that I took in Iceland. I love this photo. It was this amazing location that me and Mass Peter Everson were at, and it was taken on my Nikon D810 before it was sadly broken with my 16 to 35 millimeter lens at 16 millimeters. And it was taken at f13, so right at the limit of where I think diffraction starts to kick in. I don't usually go above um, f13. I occasionally do if, if, if I think it's the only option. It's usually though to reduce light rather than to increase depth of field. I focus on infinity, obviously, in this, and everything's in focus. I've also talked about this one, which I showed you, which is exactly the same. And in this one, I actually only needed f6.3 because the grass was even further away from me. It was probably around about 1.6, 1.7 meters away. But this one's taken on my, on my Fuji X-T2 at 24 millimeters, which is 36 millimeters equivalent. And I actually purposely wanted a little bit of soft focus on the bottom um, of the image because 
I felt that these grasses were, were quite bright and I didn't want to detract attention at, at, at the corners and at the bottom. And I also wasn't really bothered if the path was slightly soft as well. So I, I dropped it down to f8 and being um, a, a tw 20, 24 millimeter focal length, then obviously I didn't get as much of the depth of field when I focused on infinity. So I focused on infinity and didn't worry too much about where the focus dropped. And it's a good example there of aesthetics where you don't really need to worry about everything being pin sharp. It just works, it sort of leads your eye in from the bottom. And another one that was like that, but on a more extreme scale, is this one when I was on, on the island of Skye. The reason I was low down is because it was so windy. It was just one of the windiest days I've ever shot. And actually the two days we had the workshop in the Isle of the Sky were so windy. We did get some amazing shots though. This was taken um, at f1.6, believe it or not. Um, so you don't often think of shooting f1.6 for landscapes, but I couldn't find a really good foreground, but I really like the sort of colors and how the colors connected the, the foreground to the, the, the colour of the grass on the um, peninsula there with the lighthouse on. So I thought, I know what, I'll just focus on the lighthouse. I'll put it on as, as low as I can on my Sigma f1.4 24mm lens and I'll just let it just go completely soft in the foreground. But it leads your eye in, it looks good and it leads your eye in. And even these rocks here are soft as well. But again, that just leads your eye in and it doesn't create distracting elements all the way down to the lighthouse. And I think it works. I think it's where focus has been used, you know, in a, in a clever way to be able to, to get that shot. In a similar way, I did that of um, Steve here, who, one, of, one of the attendees, um, an amazing photographer himself. And he was just lining up with his camera and trying to protect from the wind. And I thought it made a good shot. I liked his bobble hat and I thought, again, I'll just focus on uh, his camera and I'll let the bobble hat go out of focus and the lighthouse go out of focus. But his camera will be in focus, so it'll show the scene in the background. And again, you know, using selective focus, it just made something a little bit different. I know this is not a landscape shot, but I think using selective focus is really important in lots of types of, um, of, of photography. Okay, going on to another one from Sky. So this was at Elgol, which is an incredible place. Um, this was my Fuji X-T3 with my 10 to 24 millimeter lens on at 10 millimeters at f11. And again, you can see that it's sharp front to back. Guess where I focused? On infinity. And um, yeah, it just worked it just worked perfectly. Uh, I, just, I just think it looks absolutely fantastic. So this one's slightly different. So on this one, I, I wanted the softness to go into the background. So I purposely focused on the fern in this one because I wanted the fern to be super, super sharp. I've got a really wide lens on again. It's my 10 millimeter um, side of my 10 to 24 millimeter lens on my Fuji. And then I wanted it to be soft in the background. There was a bit of fog and I just wanted to add to that softness with, with, with a slight out of focus background. And it is very, very slight but it means that this pops at the front and then you, you, your eye can just sort of drift into the distance and it looks quite sort of mystical. So I like that, I think that worked really well. It, it was an example of where I actually focus on the subject though, rather than just infinity and then let everything drop into focus. And I did exactly the same as that on these trees. I started and experimented with these trees and you can see my succession and progression of, 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 of messing about with things. So I wanted the trees to be in focus, obviously. So I started with f7.1, it's 83 millimeter on my Fuji X-T3. So there's gonna be a less depth of field as we increase the focal length of the camera, we reduce the amount of um, things in, in, in focus, so we reduce that depth of field. So f7.1, I think the background's slightly too much out of focus and it can be out of focus, but it needs to be almost in focus, I think. So when I went to the next one, which was F11, I think that that worked. I think that that allowed me to get those trees in focus and the background trees just slightly out of focus. So it's a good compromise. And yeah, focus on the trees. The, the, the focus took me to those trees, but not that much past because the actual hyperfocal distance in, in this case was probably about 20, 30 meters. Just before I finish, I just want to tell you about three in-camera techniques really quickly. So the first one is using your um, 
LCD screen, so it's just a no-brainer to check with your LCD screen the image after you've taken it. I always do it, I look at my foreground, I look at the distance and just zoom in and check it's okay. You've got that and it just makes sense to do it. It's better looking at it on there and then making a change than getting back into Lightroom and seeing that it's not quite right. The other one is how you can get hyperfocal distance and, and, and work out the hyperfocal distance by using your camera. I don't really like this technique, but I'm gonna say it because somebody will mention it in the comments. And that is that you zoom in on your screen to a distant mountain, and then you move the focus to a closer and closer point until the distant mountain goes out of focus. You've got to have engage your aperture on your lens to do that. So you just need to either press the button on the front or set it in the menu to engage your aperture. And then, and then that should, in theory, have set your hyperfocal distance. And then the third one is using focus peaking. So if I just show you on here, if I just hold the camera up there, then hopefully it'll focus on the screen. I should, should be in focus and there should be some red lines on me showing that I'm in focus. And that's focus peaking. Those red lines tell me which bits are in focus. And it's a really good way of checking your foreground. I find it really useful. I use it quite a lot as well. Not every camera's got focus peaking though. So I hope that's helped. What I, what I want to do is just tell you a little bit more about the app that I use because it's, it's really, really useful. So it's Photopills and on Photopills you can, by the way, I'm not sponsored by Photopills. <laughs> I feel like I should be. Um, so it, it's just a really good app. Um, so on it, you can type in your camera make and then that works out the um, circle of confusion for that camera make, which you need to work out the hyperfocal distance and you type in your focal length and what aperture you're shooting at. And then you can either tell it the subject distance, so I either put in like a thousand meters, which is effectively infinity, and it tells me then where the closest focus point will be. And it also then tells me the hyperfocal distance. So if I get the hyperfocal distance from that, I can double it, focus on that point, and then make sure I get a, a, bit, a, a bit more in focus if I, if I feel like I need to when I'm focused on infinity. It is a really useful app. I'd definitely go and, and try it. The other thing that I would really strongly advise you to do is take a look at this video here where I did four things that you should always test on your camera and go out and try your setup. Try a different focal lens, try a different apertures, work out where diffraction sets in for your particular camera setup. And I guarantee it will make such a big difference to your photography. Okay, I hope that's been useful and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've got any top tips for focusing, any other ways or any tricks that you might think, please leave them in the comments below. It'd be a really good resource for people that are searching in the future. And until next Sunday, bye.